technological sovereignty comes in different forms. It comes by choice, uh, uh, depending on how your population sees their livelihood as fit in the de technological evolution, whether they want to live within their own developed scope of technology or not. And in this case, I think indigenous innovation is sort of the key word here. But it doesn't apply to every single jurisdiction because there is a different level of state capacity and industrial capacity in each jurisdiction regarding technological development. And for my own country, so South Korea, where I come from, there is a, a plethora of uh, industry just built uh, around the sectors of semiconductors, mm. uh, cables, so <clears throat> networks, telecom networks, and electronics, basically. So because AI, the full AI stack, uh, re uh, involves these types of industries, they are in it for the boom and they are in it for the risk also. And to regulate that risk, uh, a jurisdiction can try to establish norms or uh, legislations in order to combat sort of the risks that may arise <clears throat> from it. And I think by jurisdiction, it has been quite a different uh, journey. Like the EU has been very regulatory. Uh, China has some uh, legislations, including the anti-espionage or cybersecurity mm. laws. The U.S. doesn't have much in this regard because <clears throat> of the tech firm uh, power in Congress. I mean, over Congress. Um, but in the Korean case, it's uh, the EU, uh, so it's a little bit akin to the EU AI Act, but it has the components of promoting the technology industry. So it's a balance between. Um, so South Korea's AI Act is a balance between promotion and protection of the industry as well as regulation of AI. Okay, okay. 